here we go. Down and around and up. There we go. Okay, cool. Ah, uh, no, no, damn it. Yeah, yes, saved it. What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the show. And today we're actually back here in the editing room where I spend more time than you might think. Now, if you remember the last episode where we started out in here, I was getting ready to go ride with the Ride ADV folks and see exactly how bad I sucked at riding off road. Well, we've established that baseline and today it is time to go through their adventure training course. This is the beginner level stuff, the stuff that they would recommend most folks start with, but they also have advanced training courses too, which I'm actually probably going to be going back and doing because spoiler alert, this is one of the best training courses that I've actually been through. It feels a lot like Yamaha Champ School, but for the dirt, it is just that good. Now, real quick, before we dive into the meat of today's video, I do want to shout out the fact that the Ride ADV folks are giving away one of their training weekends. And you guys can pick which weekend you want. You can pick whether it's beginner or intermediate or expert. All of that stuff is down in the description below. It's going to start today, the second the video goes live, and it will be running until January 24th. So you have plenty of time to get yourself entered to win. And once again, I highly recommend you check this out because it is not only a ton of fun, but you're gonna learn a whole lot. Speaking of which, let's dive on into the video and see what it's all about. So right off the bat, I wanted to say something that I'll end up reiterating throughout the video, but the training course that Ride ADV puts together isn't just some two-day stint in a dirt lot. You and I both know that that stuff gets boring fast, so instead, the way the course is set up is it's a ride through the hills on actual dirt roads. Instead of showing up at some range, the group met up at the hotel and then we headed out to a dry lake bed where we ran through the basics. This was about as classroomy as it got, though we did have the added benefit of Dave Moss from Dave Moss Tuning Attendance, so we got a crash course in bike setup too. Once we got on the bike, we did the usual drills that you might expect for a beginner course, stopping, starting, both sitting and standing, practicing counterweighting turns, and how to move on the bike under acceleration and braking. I'm a huge proponent of practicing the fundamentals. Whether you're Mark Marquez or Ricky Carmichael, bad practice leads to bad form, so even if you think this stuff is beneath you, I highly recommend you take some time and practice it. Another thing I want to shout out here is you're probably noticing that a lot of what we've been doing so far is seated. That's because we were taught what I would call the doctrine of strategic laziness. There's no point to standing up if you don't need to, so practicing some skills from a seated position can help you rest and stay fresh for the harder sections of the trails. We were out in the lake bed for a few hours practicing, and then things went off the rails because in his infinite wisdom, Tyler led an avid Fallout New Vegas fan to the promised land, Good Springs. Guys, to drive home further, the Fallout fanboyism, I just saw two uh, signs for adopting this highway. One was the Good Springs General Store, and the other was the Pioneer Saloon. So, uh, me thinks that we're riding into Good Springs right now. <laughs> there it is. Good Springs. <laughs> oh, there it is. Well, sadly, we did not get to stop and actually eat at the uh, Pioneer Saloon, but the food smelled delicious and uh, apparently it's like a two hour wait. So no Good Springs Saloon for me today, but that did not stop me from spending like $100 in there just buying shit. I bought, you know, Nuka-Cola cap and Fallout tag and hats because of course. <laughs> so uh, little, little excursion uh, during the middle of the day to nice fun little destination absolutely nerded out and uh time to get back to it 
That is actually one of the fun things about uh, the way this is set up is it's it's literally just an adventure day. Like, yeah, obviously we're out here training and we're learning how to ride adventure bikes, but we're doing it in the context of an adventure, which, you know, <laughs> hell yeah, sign me up. I like that we're not just, you know, in a field all day long. Like that, Not nothing against the MSFs adventure training course, uh, but you're just on the range, you know? Um, the, the, the dirt gets really predictable and stuff, but, you know, with the ride guys were actually out, you know, in places that they've gone and scouted, and we're doing an adventure day. We're just also happening to learn and practice. All right, folks, well, it was all fun and games up till now, but it's time to roll through a sand pit. This is where I'm most likely to end up dropping the motorcycle here. I hate sand. Anybody who has seen my videos in the past knows it's my, uh, my Achilles heel, as it were. And I am just seeing some nice deep ruts through here. Good grief. I have been told by Tyler up there a uh, different technique for going through the sand as opposed to blipping or accelerating through the sand as I've been uh, told to in the past. Basically to, you can go as slow as you want through it as long as you just kind of dance with the motorcycle. So <laughs> we'll see how it goes. Try to refrain from steering with your handlebars. Right. Like I said, with your, with your, with your hips. Your yeah. You saw, you saw on, my, on the way back, you saw how I told my bike completely like did this. Yeah. I was able to counter it and stay upright and right. kind of surf it out. All right. Oof, yeah, okay, so the technique for sand as far as I can see through, from what these guys are showing us is just to let the bike dance and, you know, there's no, there's no real prize for going through it quick, so kind of don't bother, just take it easy and go slow. <laughs> I know I haven't hit any really deep shit, but it's still taking a second to to sink in just how to let the bike... Oh, down goes the first one. Whew. Okay. Yeah, steering with your weight. Man, that makes a huge difference. He says as he almost drops the motorcycle. <laughs> oh, made it. Nice. Okay. Yeah, okay. That's nice. Just not correcting with the handlebars and not correcting with the throttle. I hate, I hated that idea of correcting with the throttle. It felt so weird. Go right, go right, 
Yeah, there we go. Hell yeah. That's awesome. That was awesome. Learning that, hell yeah. That was great. Like that was, that could be as big a thing as when I first learned to start shifting my weight to turn more effectively. So everybody always says I hate sand, but when you do it like that, it's fun. It's totally, yeah, it's awesome. Well folks, we are getting ready to lose the light. We got about half an hour, maybe maybe 45 minutes of light left before the sun sets behind those mountains. Which means that I will likely be good and chilly because it's like an hour back to Vegas. However, uh, I would like to pontificate upon what I have learned today. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to offer the fact that if you have not done any kind of practice with slow speed drills, riding on or off-road, I highly recommend you at least, you at least brush up on it. Brush up on shifting your weight around on the motorcycle. That's gonna give you such a head start when you do decide to go off-road. Because I think, I think honestly, everybody's gonna decide to go off-road sooner rather than later. Because off-road riding is just so much fun. Secondly, uh, sand and loose, deep loose stuff it's not as scary as I used to think it is um, it was so nice to uh, it was it was so nice to be able to go through it you know at my own pace and not have to worry about you know smashing into stuff or you know losing the front end um, it was really nice to just be able to take it good and slow and then third, uh, it really helps to have Dave Moss around <laughs> to, to work on your suspension for you. Because Dave uh, touched up the suspension on this bike. He busted out his screwdriver and got it all set in, in just a few minutes. It was, it was crazy to watch him work. I mean, the amount of expertise in that man's head is, is next level. So... Obviously setting your suspension if you can is a huge bonus. Well guys, I'm gonna wrap things up for today uh, Tomorrow We're supposed to get into some even gnarlier stuff, which is gonna be fun. So uh, I'm not sure whether or not I'm gonna bust it into another video or if I'm gonna just do a chapter two on this one so regardless, I'll catch you guys tomorrow or later or Whenever I don't know. Goodbye Alrighty folks, welcome to day two of the training, starting here in the uh, very difficult McDonald's parking lot. <laughs> we uh, had uh, some issues getting started this morning, but we are all now bright-eyed, bushy-tailed, fed up on fats and carbs and getting ready to go hit the trails, which I'm, if I recall correctly, are behind that mountain. You guys have already seen some of these trails because I filmed that Jixus video out there. I accidentally stumbled on it uh, myself when I was looking for some fun roads to film on. Day two started out with a nice little recap of the basics from the first day, but then we added a few skills that might be handy out on the trail. Stuff like starting and standing up right away, as well as starting side saddle and mounting as the bike was moving. This is where I struggled the most with a handful of drops both on and off camera. So when you step on that peg, your bike wants to go this way, right? So as, as you're putting weight on it, you have to lean it away from you. Gotcha. All right. There we go. Good posture coming up the hill. Yeah, I don't know why I lost it just then. <laughs> well, your, your front tire dug in. Oh yeah. Going down on that off camber. That'll happen.
Man, that starting side saddle's harder than I would have thought. Now my bike smells like gasoline. So the advice was to let the bike get going. Yeah, there we go. Now it feels more right. Okay. Yeah, all right. You definitely do need to just let it get going first. That makes a lot more sense. It feels a lot better. All righty, so we just uh, got done doing some, you know, slow speed drills, a little bit of warm up stuff, and that uh, starting side saddle, that <laughs> ended up being a little bit more difficult than I initially thought, but I also think I was just trying to do it all too fast. And uh, when you slow things down, it actually becomes a lot simpler. So I feel pretty good about where I left off with all that stuff. And again, that's something you can practice anywhere on any bike. And uh, you can immediately bring it out to the dirt if you want, which is fun. So now we're heading off to uh, go ride a handful of trails. Each one of these is gonna step up in difficulty. And this is just another reason why I'm enjoying this course more than any of the other ones that I've taken is because we're actually out riding. We're not, we're not on a range. It's, you know, kind of unpredictable out here. I, I like that. We're actually learning, you know, it's like uh, when you're doing math in school and you're like, when am I ever going to use this in real life? And well, we're actually out here learning the skills that they're teaching us in real life, which is, it's nice. It's, it shows how practically useful it is and how immediately useful it is because you can just go out, find the right terrain, which is what these guys do. They go find the right terrain for the level and then they immediately stop and they're like, all right, this is the lesson. Now go do it in the real world. That's awesome. I really like that. Oh, I feel so much better juking from one track to another now. Like just diving side to side, just picking your moment, looking way ahead and knowing when and how to move and picking that spot and hitting it. It feels great. It feels like you can actually stitch the ride together a little bit more as opposed to reacting to stuff that's right in front of your front tire. <laughs> yeah, there's just you can really start to flow if you start steering with your weight. I do wish my handlebars were a little bit taller now. I'm starting to feel that where I'm, you know, because they're lower, I'm pitching forward at the hips and leaning on the handlebars. I wish I was staring, standing straight up more. Oh, no, no, damn it. Yeah, yes, saved it. Oh, that would have been a stupid drop. If you're any smaller, Maybe here, maybe, 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 and yep, there we go. Yeah, that's fun.
Alrighty, folks, this is probably where I eat shit in earnest on the, oh, on the trail. Come on, bike. Where's my line? Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Yep, here we go. Down and around and up. There we go. Okay, cool. Cleaned it. Probably not very gracefully, but we're up and over. Whew. Yeah, I could feel the front end starting to get a little bit wonky, but again, you just got to be moving your weight. That's the biggest thing that they've been going over is just shifting your weight around. Let's watch these other guys go up the hill. Well guys, as we wait for the rest of the group to catch up, we have officially left the dirt for the last time this weekend. Uh, and we are off to basically the location that any good adventure should end at. A watering hole with cold beer and probably bar food or at least tacos across the street. So we'll see, I'll see you there in just a second. We'll wrap this whole thing up. Well, folks, we made it to the end of our two-day training adventure. Everybody is behind me eating a bunch of awesome food truck food because we haven't eaten anything all day long and we're getting pretty darn hungry. So I gotta go over there and pound a burrito. But before I do, remember, if you liked any of what you saw today, click that link down in the description below and check out Ride Adventures. Honestly, guys, this has been the best off-road training experience that I've had. Um, they just do, a, they did a really great job and it really did feel like an actual proper adventure while we were out there. Even though it was just a training, you know, we weren't, we weren't just goofing around in a parking lot. We weren't just goofing around in some random dirt lot. We were actually out on trails. So all of the stuff that we were talking about, we were immediately using. And that is really cool. It's the first time I've seen that. And if you want to get started riding ADV, that is a great way to learn. So click that. Oh boy. It's been a long day. I'm not sure I can get through this piece of camera all in one piece. Anyway, click that link down in the description below and check out Ride Adventures. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed this long video, probably. I have no idea how long it was. This has been two days and I haven't even thought about editing anything. I haven't even ingested the footage. Goodbye, I need to go eat a burrito. See you in the next one.